Hey everyone, in the garage today, we got this really nice Craftsman uh, Briggs and Stratton powered flathead, uh, similar predecessor to the overhead valve. Uh, so your, your machine may look like this, your engine may be like this, but this is a common problem. This is, this is another video in the series of this may be your problem, okay? Because there's a lot of things that can go wrong. Let's describe uh, the symptoms. You go to pull on the pull cord and it kicks back, it rips out of your hand. You hear the motor kind of fire and kick, and then it rips right out of your hand. Another symptom would be is it just doesn't want to start. You push the primer bulb, you can smell fuel, maybe even pull the plug out. Looks like it's kind of firing, but you're not really getting anything out of it. it just does not want to start. I think a bigger one though is, is that it'll probably yank it out of your hands. <sighs> so what is the problem? Well, that's what we're going to take a look at in this episode. Yeah, um, and the question you got to ask yourself is, did you hit something? Did you lend the machine out to a neighbor or a brother-in-law or your brother or somebody else and they brought it back and it was running fine when you gave it to them and now they gave it back to you and they didn't say nothing? Now on this one, I'm going to show you the blade and we're going to take a look at the blade as well. It didn't look all that bad, but there's a point in the, uh, and I went over this whole thing uh, for a customer. Let me give you a little backstory. Um, but the blade didn't look bad, but it, it, it took a lot of metal off. I had to grind a lot of metal off to get it to balance. So I did that and I tested it and it, the blade is fine now, but it's still, and I'm going to tell her, um, bring it back in a year for service or two years and just remind me to get rid of the blade. And if you want, we'll put a new blade on or another good used blade, keeping the prices down. So a little backstory, uh, Rosemary's around the corner, she's an older woman and her and her friend, George, um, she's going to get fined, okay, and she's got to cut the grass. So she bought a new electric lawnmower and had to bring it back because it killed it, died. Neighbor said, I've got one for you, okay, why don't you take it? Now, it won't start, and, and I think the neighbor said, you, you're going to have it serviced. So she went looking around, bumped into me, and said, can you fix it? I said, well, of course, if it's, you know, if it's repairable. Let's find out how I fixed it and how I found it, and I'll see you there. Stay tuned. I want to pull this nut off just peek in there just to make sure that somebody didn't hit something I know there was a blade on there that didn't look all that bad and I got it already bolted on I'll give you a peek a little later oh look at that fellas see I told you right it's cocked yep yep let's get that out we're gonna tap these out I don't want to bang on the top right because I just don't like that doing that right you can damage the motor um, so let's just these are drilled, so let's just tap those out and throw my puller in there and pop this thing off and we'll fix it. All right, so just real quick. Uh, so to save some time, I took the tops off and all that. And that should be pretty much, you know, self-explanatory and straightforward. Got to, you have to find ways to save time, fellas, because nobody watches these videos when they're beyond like three seconds. So I did all of that and I got everything all cleaned up, which I'll talk about a little bit again uh, later on but it's a good time to do that listen if your machine broke there's a really good chance that you're going to need to clean your machine and you're going to need to do a tune up and all that but first you want to see if you can fix it right because why do all of that you're thinking why would i want to clean up everything arch well because i have all kinds of stuff here and i have other motors and and i'm going to solve this problem one way or another like that's just going to happen so that's a given but i get it if you you're thinking oh i don't want to clean everything arch you're gonna you know listen up fellas don't don't make me come over there I like to start off with a regular tap first. Um, now, because it'll cut quicker, right? It'll get started quicker. Quarter 20. Um, you can use a quarter 24, but you don't need that. And I just use the bottoming tap to finish up. Because the starting tap will only go in just so far. Now, on the Briggs, like most of these are pre-drilled, and some of the crankshafts have that little countersink in it, but not all of them. Right, these bores, the holes that are pre-drilled, they go pretty deep. And you catch some more threads with a bottoming tap. I just made a bottoming tap out of one of my older taps that, you know, the starting threads on the tap would get a bit beat, right? So that's what I do. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, on some of the, uh, the flywheels, like, you need every thread you can get. These are, are more forgiving. There you go. So you can see the ends. 
and that end's pointy and the starting threads th this even the starting threads on this tap are getting beat but you could see how much I cut off right to make a, a bottoming tap so that gets rid of that that's sharp actually that bottom tap why because it's starting about here on the threads right over here somewhere and you can see how they're getting worn I can feel it so that's a candidate for a bottoming tap uh, another bottoming tap just be careful don't overdo it and use some lube oil or cutting fluid again quarter 20 and uh, you know you build your kit over time so for those those of you that already know you already know what I'm talking about but those of you just starting out right you know you get a couple extra taps you can buy them individual or a couple pack like a two pack or whatever keep them around build your kit as you go grind it you got to grind it on a grinder these are hard these are hardened you want to be careful with them because they'll break and they'll break in the hole and then you're done and you got to bang it out you got to break it out which will just bork everything well here's the setup so I have this conical thing on the end of this type of a puller and um, because we have a center uh, pivot like on the crankshaft here it's another way of saying it so because we have that right I can use this kind of puller I have other pullers as well all right so you want to try to hold it straight because it's going to try to lean all right so let's just give it up you know hold it I'm coming from this side um, and hopefully this will do it a lot of times it does if it stops, I won't force it, okay? If it stops, and it will very often, because this is a lightweight Ryobi, but if it stops, I'll heat it, and it'll pop. But it might just, just go anyway, right? It's in good shape. I'll put a rag on. Go slow. Let me pull the bail back. Got a piece of Velcro holding back the handle. All right. Now, that's why a lot of times people like to hit it. Now, let me wipe it down because I put a little lubricant on that. And we'll get some heat on it, right? And you'll see it'll pop. So you, let me go get the heater. Here's a closer look at that bolt. Whoa, are you guys long enough? <clears throat> All right, let me get this out of the way before I start flaming things because, you know, vapors, vapors, fellas, they'll blow up. They'll blow the thing right off and they'll shoot right at me. So let me go do that real quick. It's got to get done anyway. I took the carburetor tank off and everything. Get anything that's a combustible out of the way. Respect the flame. All right? Just take the chill off. See if we can go a little bit more with the tool. All right, because remember now, it's, it's jammed from that pin being screwed up. There, oh, see that? That's it. All right. Yeah, she jammed on there. All right, let it cool down a little bit. Put the torch away. Break down the tool set, we'll grab it out of there, clean it up, and check it. And if it's no good, I keep other flywheels. A lot of times it'll screw up the key. See you in a bit. Yeah, this key's mangled. Oh. Look at that. And that's what it's supposed to look like. This is a good used one. We're just going to take this, and I'm just going to drag it on the file, all right? Just make sure it's okay. So I'll do that, polish that up a little bit on the file, make sure there's no burrs. And in here looks pretty good. Actually, it didn't actually, usually it messes up the shoulder, and it did a little bit, but it should be okay. Um, so we're going to clean that up, too. I'll show you how I'm going to do that in a minute. And this all looks good in here. It's actually quite clean, but I try to stick the pressure washer underneath and get some of it. Uh, we're going to use our wire brush on this, clean everything up, and I'm going to put a little touch of lube. 
use a little oil, but I like to use my tranny mix stuff. And I just throw that on there when I'm done and just wipe off any excess and we'll put this back together. Yeah, that looks good. Now, if it was leaking, you'd see it. All right, this to whole top would be a mess and be oil. And you can check this too. Move it back and forth when you put the flywheel on and try to move it, okay? Back and forth, see if it's gonna move. But you would also know that the seal was leaking. And uh, usually the seals don't go bad. What goes bad, somebody hits something or whatever, or there's not enough, it's, the oil's not changing enough and not enough good lube is getting up to the top of this bearing surface, which is really no bearing in these motors. Uh, it's, it's just the aluminum. So if it's not getting enough lubricant or it's really dirty and it's not able to come up through this passage, uh, that, will, that will wear and it'll piss all over the place. And what'll happen is, is as it wears, it'll move back and forth. It'll stretch the seal. And seal will stretch out, oblong out, and it'll leak. Got this cleaned up too. That looks all good there. All right, we're ready to put it back on. All right, see that? I just want to show you, fellas. All right, so there's a wide way, a width-wise, and that is width-wise. And then the key's got a narrow. If you tried to put it in a narrow, it would fall right out. All right, see? So the key is narrow and then wide. And of course, you want to go the wide way. All right, so let's get started. All right, fellas, I just got like a medium cartridge roll here. I used one too. All I want to do is just run it in real quick and just to remove any burrs that are on that shoulder. And yeah, I can see it already. You're not going to be able to see it. I don't think I'm going to be able to get a camera in there. But, and then I'll spin it around a little because there's always like oxidation and yak. yak. I don't want to really remove any material, so I don't want to sit here and, you know, polish it. That's good. And I'll just wipe it out. I'm going to throw it back on. It's just quick. Like I said, you're probably not going to see it. Well, you can see a little bit, fellas. Let's see. You know? Just quick. That's it. I'm done. I'm going to wipe it out. We'll put it back on. And the maggots are all nice and clean. Look at that. All right? So there's nothing that I know. There's shiny objects in cameras, fellas. It's always been an issue. It's getting better, but... Plus, it has a lot to do with how much I care. Right? And I don't care right now. All right, let's get this thing on. Let me show you. Stand by. All right, fellas. Key in hand. Now, I'm aiming it away from you so I can show you. You don't need to see anything up close. We already did all the close-up shots. We did our glow-up close-up shots. All right? So, key's facing me, and that's good, too, because you don't want... There's no magnets here. Um, so just be mindful of that. So if there's a magnet and you were lining it up, the magnet would be attracted to the armature, and it would boop, and yeah, it, you'd screw it up, you'd, you'd cock it. Oh, stop saying words like that. Listen, fellas, get your head out of the gutter. All right, so what we're gonna do is just gonna line up the, the, uh, the keys, drop it down, make sure it's lined up, and then put drop the key in, widthwise, like I said. And it should go right down, which it just did. Let me give you a peek, All right, and then I'm going to put the, the cap on the bolt and about 50, 55 pounds, book says, somewhere in that neighborhood. When you get to a little bigger motor, you're about 65 foot pounds, not inch pounds, foot pounds. And uh, on the big motor, it's like 150. Uh, so, you know, listen, if you're anywhere around 50, uh, this little bagger tool, we'll put it on and it it's probably makes about 50-ish, I don't know. Uh, the bigger tool, I'm going to use this in a minute. So after I get you a close-up shot, uh, this is 500 foot-pounds. Uh, these are the nice, you know, this is my Ingersoll rant. It's an IR automotive and everything. Uh, so I have it on the lowest setting. And I, the lowest setting is pretty much what I use for anything I need to do on any one of these lawnmowers for the most part, unless, unless it's a much bigger setup and I need to get closer to 100 or change. That's more than enough. If you need to torque it down, be careful, fellas, with shoving screwdrivers into the fins. <clears throat> Uh, you're better off having the blade on, take the plug out, hold the blade, put a chock of wood in, and use your wrench to pull it in, right? Use a good socket wrench or something. A three-eighths probably would be better as if you have a half-inch drive. And just pull it in tight, make sure everything is in alignment. Don't get, don't get crazy with it, but it needs to be tight. Now, these banger tools, uh, that's actually another discussion, but when they rate their talk, torque, Torque is turning force, but these things bang. So they don't just create a, a, a turning force and a compression force 
due to the things pulling together from the threads of the nut, bolt, etc. They do this other thing where they bang. So, you know, those torque ratings are like you would never want to assemble a set of heads on anything, especially like your hot rod, you know, $10,000 engine with a banger tool because it develops some t torque number. All right, let's, let's keep going. All right, you see how it's laying in there all nice, right? Nice and lined up. All right, here we go. Here we go. Let's put this thing on. You need tools, fellas. I know some people, like when they're starting out, they're like, oh, actually, I can't afford it. Listen, I, I know the deal. I can't afford tools. I just picked up those nice Milwaukee M18 set on a trade, right? I traded a nice Toro lawnmower for it. But I'm dead broke, right? With everything going on. I get it, fellas. I understand. Oh, I can't be buying all this stuff. I, I know. I know. I'm, uh, listen, I love and I love tools. I wound up having to sell a lot of my tools when I got a divorce. Getting rid of stuff. And it's like, oh, no, I don't want to do that. All right, done. All right, and again, on the lower setting on the dial. All right, we're done with this. Yeah, see, this blade's on its last legs. All right, because I had to do a lot of balancing to it. It doesn't really vibrate that bad. It's not, it's not terrible. It's just a little bit. So I'm gonna tell her, uh, let's replace this blade. There's still a lot of cutting material on it, but they must have just gave it a bit of a whack. It's kind of hard to tell, but get any season out of it. Some of the next season, if she wants to bring it back next year or the year after for an oil change, I'll tell her, just remind me, we'll replace the blade and we'll do a, a, you know, another quickie tune-up on it, make sure everything's okay, because she's in nice shape. All right, fellas, one last thing. I'm going to say this a couple of times, right? So I have the bail pulled back, which is the brake, the engine kill brake. And it's pulled back, and I you can use a clamp. I have some Velcro I wrap around. Whatever, you gotta have it back because if that brake is on, it'll be hard to get the flywheel off when you try and take it off. And of course, it'll be difficult to put the flywheel on, and it will cock the flywheel. Remember, this is a tapered shaft, and even though it's tapered, if you if anything is kicking, that's why I got rid of the burr on the flywheel. That's why I made sure the the uh, the shaft was clean. Um, anything that kicks it, it will try to stay like that somehow. It, it will. It'll, it'll just kick it enough. And it could be a few thousandths off. These flywheels are balanced. It's another reason why you don't want to break a fin. It'll throw it out of balance. Um, it will, of course, it won't cool right. That's where all the engine coolant is coming from when you're cooling your engine. You want to make sure everything is clean because dirt will stop it from cooling the engine. So now's your chance to get in there and clean this thing up and inspect everything. And and like I said, that blade was not that bad. So it, that blade could still be an issue. Even though I looked at it, I lay it on my table and I try to see if it's bent and it did require a bunch of grinding on one end to get rid of the, the balance issue, it may be no good. Um, so it can be deceiving and this is why I always check this. I check this every time. And even though this thing looked good, something made this thing stop. And the person, for whatever reason, said, eh, it don't work no more. Maybe it might have been kicking back. Son of a bitch. Stupid damn thing. That's another thing, too. It might have started and ran, but it, oh, and you go to pull it and it'll rip it out of your hand. And it'll hurt you. It'll hurt you. That's how you know. Like you hurt your hand and you go to start your engine. God. Oh. Oh. Damn it. Oh. And it's kicking back like that. What a nightmare. It hurts. And this is one of the reasons why. So I just want to make sure I covered that again. And even if I have to say it a few times, it's important. All right, fellas. Now, before we get out of here, okay, I just want to show you this machine. It's beautiful. It came out really mint. It was really happy. They actually overpaid me. Really nice uh, people. You know, totally different than, you know, like my generation, which was, you know, almost as good. <clears throat> I don't know what's going on now. Come on, fellas. You got to step up to the plate, you youngins. I have another video, too, uh, with uh, showing how to take it off with, you know, the flywheel off with a crowbar and a, and a big lump hammer. But you can really mess stuff up, and if you haven't done that before, yeah, you can really screw up. And you need to consider that the reason why I used the heat in the puller and went slow, so I didn't screw anything up. Because you may not have another flywheel. You may not have another crankshaft with threads on the top that you didn't bork, right, from slamming it with stuff. Don't do, don't do that. You do that, that's it. So, and also that key... And, you know, I, mis I misspeak sometimes because, you know, you're thinking one thing and you like you already know what the hell you're thinking and talking about. But then it comes out weird and I'm weird. So that key gets screwed up. And when everything torques and twists, 
All right, it, it takes up all what little bit of clearance, it cocks everything, and it won't come apart. Um, so if you go prying and doing all this stuff, there's a good chance you'll just break something and put a hole in the motor, and I don't know. That's why the heat, because it just will not come apart. You need some room, so by heating it, it expands. That gives you the room you need. That's important, right? Because it's jammed on there, all right? Like I mentioned, I probably didn't say enough of that. Anyway, I can just keep going on. Let me not do that. Uh, this thing came out really nice, and I wish you guys the best of luck on. Don't Just don't hit stuff. Don't throw these machines out, because you ain't going to get anything better today unless you want to spend a grand. And, you know, don't throw them out. And if you do, right, bring them over to my neighborhood, and uh, I'll pick it up. So let me get you out of here on this on this thought, right? Take care of your stuff. Do the tune-up. Do everything else to it. Take your time. I know there's a lot of videos out there on this, and I have a couple as well. But these machines are worthy of saving. And uh, I just made a couple people smile, right? Because now they have a very inexpensive way of cutting their lawn instead of this electric crap, right? Which is, you know, if you got a really small lawn, and the other thing, too, is you, you better cut it often because it's not going to handle, you know, high, wet, like, tall grass with... <sighs> what a world. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching this episode of Archer's Garage. Get it! All right, nice and cold. Let's push this, you know, three, four times.